Chan, it was just uh, two months ago that Roger Stone sent out a fundraising email to supporters where he wrote, quote, I'm next on the crooked special <coughs> prosecutor's hit list because I've advised Donald Trump for the past 39 years. Um, discounting that crazy claim that he's crooked, that Mueller's crooked, and, you know, but you hear this latest reporting, I guess the question is, does it sound like Stone's right that he might be next on the list? Yeah, I think uh, Roger's instincts are right on that count. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, What's the crime? What's the potential crime? Well, the crime for him would be part of the collusion notion, which is that he might be being the kind of interface with the Russians. And the but collusion's not a crime, so it would be conspiracy? Cons conspiracy to interfere with the election. And I think the problem for him is um, these sorts of investigations are a little bit of musical chairs. You don't want to be the last person standing when the music <laughs> stops. They are working their way into him. So even if that doesn't mean indictment, it means he's the focus and he's going last. And so that's yeah. something to be worried about. Putting the squeeze on. To that point, Shimon, Mueller's team has interviewed a lot of close associates of Roger Stone, including conspiracy theorist Jerome Corsi, radio host Randy Credico, and former Trump campaign aide Sam Nunberg, who has called uh, Stone uh, a mentor. But to the best of our knowledge, uh, Mueller's team have, has not interviewed Stone. Yeah, no. He, they, in fact, Stone has told us as much that they have not interviewed him. He's not been contacted. But that's both, uh, as Shan will know, that that's both troubling. That could spell trouble for Roger Stone. The fact that uh, he has not been interviewed could indicate that he is a target. Look, it's clear that he's a target in this investigation. They keep bringing people in one after the other. This whole host of characters, I mean, that you just named, that they keep bringing in before the grand jury. Some people have been in there more than once. You know, obviously, Steve. Bannon, but in particular to the Roger Stone issue, there are some witnesses who've been who've been brought back. They've left. They've come back. They've been asked for more documents. So in the end, it does seem like there's something going on. We don't obviously know much about what goes on in terms of the special counsel's investigation. But this is the one thing that we keep hearing about: Roger Stone, Roger Stone. And interestingly enough, while Roger Stone doesn't think he's in any kind of trouble, he's certainly fundraising off of it, right? He's <laughs> asked for money uh, to help his right. defense. So we'll see. Look, we're getting close. It seems. You know, maybe perhaps after the election we'll, we'll see some activity. We certainly expect that. Uh, but, you know, it just still keeps going. Roger Stone, Roger Stone, Roger Stone. Very interesting. And Harry Stone has a history of comments that suggest he knew something was coming during the campaign. He tweeted uh, at one point during the campaign, it will soon be Podesta's time right. <laughs> uh, in the barrel. That's before the Podesta emails were released. I have total confidence that WikiLeaks and my hero Julian Assange will educate the American people soon, he said. And here's what he said to a Republican group in August 2016. Take a listen. I actually have uh, communicated with Assange. Uh, I believe the next tranche of his documents pertain to the Clinton Foundation, but there's no telling what the October surprise may be. I'm sure this is uh, all information that the special <laughs> counsel has uh, at, at, at the quick and ready as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is really what Mueller is trying to figure out. Was there any basis for what Stone said in August, and he said it on many occasions, uh, about his contacts with Assange? And if so, would that make him sort of the missing link between the Trump campaign and WikiLeaks? Or was he, as he's saying now, just puffing, just exaggerating his influence, raising money, getting people excited, but he was making it all up? And so to answer that question, Mueller needs to talk to other witnesses to look at emails and any documents in order to figure out whether Stone's comments in the summer were accurate and there's a significant backstory there, or whether he was just making it up and his comments today uh, denying any real connection to WikiLeaks uh, are, are the accurate comments. And, and, and Shan, uh, just to reiterate that point, Stone denies any wrongdoing. He denies any advanced knowledge of the content or time frame uh, for the WikiLeaks releases. Take a listen. Let me say it yet again. I had no advance notice of the source or the content or the actual release date of the devastating material that WikiLeaks published. Can he square that with his uh, previous comments? I think it's hard for him because of the timing of so much of this. I mean, you have that rather important date where the access tape comes out on Trump. It's almost as though WikiLeaks is responding to that. When you put that in conjunction with his perhaps puffery, his bragging about what he knew, you have to look very carefully at that timing, you know, and maybe it's just a spin um, and maybe uh, his spin has some truth to it. We'll see what Mueller has, if anything. Thanks one and all. Out front next.